Well, hello everyone. In today's video, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step instructions of how to hook up and use the Atmel Ice Debugger. I'm also going to show you the basics of the Atmel Studios Debugger interface. There's a lot to cover, so we better get started. Stand by! And you'll notice uh, Atmel does not follow the conventional wire scheme of a computer where the red wire is pin 1, red wire in this case is pin 3, pin 1 is to the right of that connector. I'll show you in the diagram here. As you can see the pins go 1, 3, 5, 2, 4, 6. You just have to remember when you uh, plug it in, pin 1 is always to the right of the little tab sticking out there. And we'll plug the connector onto the board. And now we'll attach the power cord to the circuit board also. Now if you just bought an Atmel ICE and you're going to uh, plug it in for the first time, make sure that you install Atmel Studio first. Otherwise uh, Windows will look for a driver and it may install the wrong driver because it won't have Atmel Studio to put the proper driver into the proper location and you can cause a big mess. It's just a pain in the ass to try and get it figured out again. So install Atmel Studio first, start it up, and then plug in your Atmel ICE. All right, now we'll go ahead and we'll start Atmel Studio and get started. All right, then you're going to want to plug in your Atmel ICE and open your project that you're going to work on. All right, once you get your project opened, you want to go to Project and go to the Properties tab down here. You can also press just Alt F7 to get to it. And then you're going to come down here. The only thing you're really going to need here is click the Tools. And you're going to select the Atmel ICE. All these numbers here are just it's either the serial number or it's something that uh, you can have more than one ICE attached to it. So I've only got one here, so we're just going to click on that. I'm going to click Interface Debug Wire. And that's all we need to do here. Now this other stuff here we don't really have to worry about. We're going to just going to leave these as defaults here. We're just going to go ahead and click our main program file here and we're going to turn on the power for the board that you're testing on. And then we're going to come up here to debug. We're going to say to start debugging and break or you can hit Alt F5. And what that's going to do is compile your code. Make sure everything's okay there. Now this here is going to, that's what that just says is there, if you're not in debug mode, the debug mode is not set. This DWIN fuse is asking you if you want to uh, use the SPI bus and enable the DWIN fuse. That's what we want to do is so we'll click yes. Then it's going to come up and say you need to toggle the target to make sure uh, and then what this is, it's, it's going to, it's just telling you the debug wire is enabled and you have to toggle power to make sure that it sets it. That's what we'll do now. And then you just click OK. And now you'll see this yellow line here with the little yellow arrow. And that's telling you that the program is just, yet it hasn't started running, it stops at first. That's what that debug and break is. It's, this is where it breaks. There are no breakpoints in the code here yet. So we're going to go up to these little um, arrows here, these little toolbars. What that is is to uh, continue. If we wanted to just make it run, we would click that. We've got our watch windows we could start and our step through, our step over, step out of, <clears throat> and our reset. I'm just going to go ahead and use the step into and we'll go step by step and see what this thing does. It'll turn on the other camera for the board and we'll see what it looks like. All right, what we'll do here first is we'll go up to this step into and we'll step into the code. 
And uh, what this uh, port B is, this is setting port B0 low. I'm using port B0 because the little connector I'm using for my LEDs, I couldn't get to a ground easy enough. So I'm just bringing this port 0 to ground and using that as ground. But anyways, we'll keep going here. I'll turn on that LED. That should be on. And you can see here that we can go no further. That's because we stepped into a delay. You can't step into a delay with these things. You have to, sorry about that. You have to uh, go around the delay uh, by setting a breakpoint. I'll show you how to do that real quick. Now, as I was saying, you're gonna need to set a breakpoint to go around your delay. You just come over to this bare section over here and just click and that puts a breakpoint. Uh, you want the breakpoint after the delay so you can just hit the continue button up here and just go around the delay. It doesn't work to go to step in. I showed you that. It doesn't work to step over it. You have to go around it by pressing continue and stopping at the breakpoint. Uh, in order to, uh, I'll show you here, if you click on the breakpoint again, it disappears. You can click on it to bring it back, or you can come over here to this little uh, cue card here, and you can click that. The breakpoint is still there. You can still see where it was, but it's not active. If you want to reactivate it, you just press that, and it reactivates it. All right, now if we click on the continue here, or press F5, it will run to the breakpoint and stop. And you can see it stopped at the break point. If we step in again, the LED will turn off. But you can see it's went into the delay. All you have to do is press continue again. It'll go again. And it'll break at the break point again. You can set multiple break points if you wanted to. Set another one here. We'll press continue. And you can see it stopped at the other breakpoint. I don't think, well, I'm sure there's a limit to breakpoints you can put in there, but uh, you can set a ton of breakpoints in this thing. I've, like I've set a half a dozen of them, which is very nice. If you can open up a uh, watch window and watch your code go through when it hits a breakpoint, you can take a look at your registers. I'll uh, show you that next. All right, I made some changes to the code here. I added a register called count. I clear it here and what that's going to do is it's going to count how many times you go through the loop. Every time it goes down through here it's going to increment and it's going to tell us how many times we've gone through this loop. I've started up the uh, debugger again and we're going to start there. I'm just going to go ahead and press. Well first of all I'll stick a breakpoint right there. Oops, wrong way. Right there. Go ahead and press continue. And we'll press it again. Press it a couple more times. All right, and then what we'll do is we'll go and start and we'll open up a watch window. All right, I had to shift my window down of the uh, screen capture software, so I'll just explain what I'm doing up here. I'm going to the debug menu, and I'm going to go ahead and do the, click on this quick watch. You can hit the shift F9 to do the same thing. And I'm going to go ahead and it asks you there what you want to watch, and you'll just say count. And I'll say, click here this add watch close and you can see down here it added count and the value is three we went through the loop three times i'll go ahead and we'll uh, run this again there's four click it again there's five you can see that that's that's what you do to keep track of registers it's just a quick way of doing it and we'll go through and i'll show you the io next so you can keep track of the pins all right, let me show you what I've got with the code here now. 
Had to change it a little bit. It's no big deal. I just commented out all of the delays so we don't have to worry about stepping through delays. And what, you, what I'm going to show you here is the I.O. stuff. You can just click this button here and it'll show you your delays. We're going to keep an eye on port B because that's where all our LEDs are. But if you wanted to keep an eye on port C or port D, they've got everything in here from analog to digital converters. they got your EE prom. We're just going to put it on port B and start stepping to the code. You can see what it does. Data direction ports there. And this is data direction port B. And you can see those are all outputs. And you can see that when you step through the code, it changes them. That's basically what this is for. Is So if you don't have LEDs hooked up, you want to see if the bit is actually going high or low. It'll tell you here what it's doing. That's mainly what this is for. So go ahead and start clicking through. Write code and uh, mess around with it. Click on different stuff to see what's going on. That's how you learn how to use the software. Now, if you want to change your code, what you're going to need to do is come up here and press Stop Debugging. That just stops the debugger so you can change your code. And I'm going to go ahead and undo these delay loops here. These comments, put that delay loop back in. You hit Control S to save. And when you hit continue, it'll recompile, restart everything. And you'll have to hit stop. Well, it stopped in a delay, but you get the uh, hit reset and you, you get the idea. You just uh, hit start again and it redoes it. If I would have went up here and hit uh, debug, and start debugging and break. It would have done. It would have just started out here and stopped at the very first line. But I just hit the uh, continue. It's not going. It's not a big deal. It'll just start the code uh, going again. But now, what do you do if you go out, step away from your desk, you go to lunch, whatever, and someone walks into your office and sits down, and decides to use your computer? Usually, the boss man. Closes out your program, opens up his uh, his web browser or or whatever he's going to do on your computer. Uh, is there any reason to panic now that he broke away the uh, program here in Atmel Studio from the board under test? Yeah, there is really no reason to panic. You just start Atmel Studio again. You'll come up here. And you'll hit this uh, thing here this, uh, on the menu. It says attach to target. You'll reattach it to the target. I'll show you what that looks like here. All right, now what I'm going to do is shut down Windows 7 without properly shutting anything off, and we'll see what it does. And here you'll see that it comes up with a little information window here that says, Do you want to stop bugging? Hopefully, debugging. Hopefully, the boss is smart enough to say yes. If it says no, it'll just not shut it down. I'll go ahead and pause the video here and restart Atmel Studio, show you what happens. Okay, I've got Atmel Studio restarted. I'm going to go ahead and click my Hello World project. I'm back in it again. If you just press this continue, it actually should start debugging again, but in case it didn't do that, you would go up to your debug menu here and come down here to attach the target and click that. And you can see that it attaches itself to your board again. I'm just going to put a uh, put a little breakpoint there so it'll stop. And I'll click that and you can see there it is. Starts debugging again, no problem. Yeah, there it is. It's working just fine so you don't have to worry about it. Just uh, Come back in, start your project again, hit debug, and then attach the target. That's kind of your life preserver to get everything moving again. Okay, so now what do you do at the end of the day? You're going to go home. Well, you could just hit the stop button here, stop debugging, and shut everything down. Uh, me, personally, what I like to do is to just release the chip in case I don't get back to the project for a while. 
and I'll show you how to properly shut down the debug tool and release the chip again. You'll click this disable debug wire and close inside of the debug menu here. If you click that, it releases the chip and you can see that the LED is flashing and why it continues to do that is that Atmel Studio loads the code here inside the chip. It just it loads it all in and when you hit a breakpoint it just when it gets to that point in the code then it shows up here on the screen so you can see where it is. But uh, basically the code is in the chip. I mean when when you de disable from the debug or disable the D-Win fuse you can use that chip in you can just use it like a normal chip. You can play around with it, do whatever you need to do with it. It's not going to stop working. It's actually code that's in there running. So that's how Atmel handles that type of thing. It's a little different than how Microchip handles it. Well, that's about it. There's not much to it once you understand the basics. Well, I hope this video helped you understand the Atmel ICE and the Atmel Studio user interface a little bit easier so you can get busy and start writing your own code. Well, please share this video with someone who you know might be having trouble getting started with that now. If this video was helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up. And if this is your first time here, I would love to have you as a subscriber. So please hit that subscribe button to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.